introduce Zeni. Um, Zeni Zerfu is a teacher and teacher educator from Ethiopia. She's now taught English for more than 10 years. She's now leading this new association of teacher association in Ethiopia called the WVAAE, World Voice and Arts Association for Teachers. She's a British Council trainer and she's worked on several education projects with the British Council, including English Connects and Gender. So over to you, Zeni, for this really interesting webinar. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And um, our topic is uh, inclusive strategies uh, for our English classroom. And the objective is to equip the language educators with strategies for inclusivity. Uh, we'll see the importance of uh, inclusive teaching and uh, we'll see some practical strategies how to make uh, diverse learning materials. Next. Okay, to begin with, um, can you please answer in the chat, what is inclusive teaching and why is it important? You can start sharing us your ideas. Thank you. Okay, um, I can't see the chat. Linda, can you see? Yeah, there's nothing Hello. there for now. Um, let's move on and we people can read each other's comments. Oh, there's some here. Uh, equality, okay. equity, no one lagging behind. Inclusivity caters for learners' needs. Okay, so we've got mm -hmm. some great comments there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. It means active participation and enhancing layers. It's important for acting. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Because of time, I will go through the next step, uh, the next uh, slide. Uh, I just want to summarize. You have already shared us some great ideas. I just want to summarize that inclusivity is very important um, to make our learners welcomed, accepted, and valued. And it increases participation and engagement of the learners, and it helps us to address different learning styles. And uh, in the meantime, we create a conducive and a very positive learning at, uh, environment. Next, please. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Can we go to the next slide? Very good. Okay, do you see uh, this lovely uh, picture? I hope you're familiar with this picture. I'm sure most of you. And I just want you to see the picture and tell us, um, what does it tell you about inclusivity? Can you share us in the chat? How do you teach this classroom? This class actually. Okay. Learn classroom. Very good, interesting, intimidating for some, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yes, there is a, a, the difference is visible. For some of them is too much, for some easy, okay. Thank you, Fozia. <laughs> All right. And difference, yes, there is visible difference. And also there are differences that we can't see and we need um, some skills and some, uh, support from our experts. Okay, uh, again, I will uh, just to summarize it and let's see the next slide, what it looks like our classroom is. Do you see what your classroom looks like? We have all these differences in your classroom, in our classroom, all of us as teachers. And some of the differences are visible as we have seen it in the picture. And some of it is not easily noticeable. So to accommodate all learners in our classroom, inclusion is needed in various lesson areas. For example, in, in the contents, we need to be uh, to have an inclusion strategies and um, various content uh, for the, our language classroom. And our language, instructional language, we use the methodologies 
and the material we provide for the students, all these lesson areas need to be inclusive. Now, we will see making learning materials diverse, and I will share you some practical tips. Next, please. Okay, next. I think I have covered this one. Okay, yeah. Um, one, uh, one slide back, please. Linda, one slide back. Yes. Um, in case of um, uh, content, uh, we can use various sources for content. We can use um, literature, short story, and uh, films, documentaries, uh, poetry, podcasts, various contents for our language classroom. And when it comes to the language uh, we use in the classroom, we have to be mindful of um, the way we address uh, students in the classroom, uh, our language, when we talk about boys and girls and uh, uh, a student with disability, our language needs to be very careful so that we don't create any um, ex exclusion or stereotyping. For example, some teachers say boys are good at maths or in sports, and then which is excluding the girls. But instead, we can we can make an inclusive language, making some students like maths, some students are good at sports, and you know, making as much as possible. And instead of calling a disabled student, a student with a disability, correcting our language can create an inclusive classroom in different ways. Okay, and also the teaching method and the learning materials are very important to be inclusive. And we are gonna see each, especially the learning material and the strategies uh, one by one. So next, please. Okay, I, I think uh, next slide. Yes. Now, the question is, why diverse learning material? Why do we need diverse? Because in this session, we are going to focus on the material part. So why do we need a diverse learning material? Um, in my classroom, I, I had 30 students all of them from different backgrounds, from different culture, different lifestyle, and different learning style and learning needs. And imagine me, how much inclusion is needed in my classroom. How much I need to make all those learners interested, engaged, motivated, and accept each other and learn from each other. It was a real challenge but there are always ways to overcome the challenges and I'll share you some of the experiences. Okay, next please. Yes, now I want you to comment in the chat, have you ever tried to create an inclusive learning material for your English classroom? Can you share us your, your experience in short? Please forward your ideas in the chat. Thank you. Okay, do you see any comments, Linda? Not yet. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Test face says using pictures, videos, and mime, etc. cetera. And okay, others, good. using images, <laughs> video, audio, finding real objects, taking into account the students' oh, needs, varying the difficult level. Loads of ideas now. This is great. Oh, okay. Thanks, everyone, Very for the comments. Okay, thank you so much for the great ideas. All right. Okay, you can keep commenting, but we have to, we have to move. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, all right. We have already mentioned about the content and the language and the methods. 
And the next step is knowing your learners. The basic and the very important step for creating an inclusive learning material is to know who is in your classroom, uh, what is their cultural background, how old are they, and what is their learning pre preferences and learning needs. And having this information can help you to make your learning material diverse and address the needs of your learners. Next, please. Next, please, Linda. Okay. Again, next. <laughs> Yes, I want us to see now the key principles of making learning materials diverse. And uh, the first one is make sure <laughs> you are representing the majority or almost all of the voices in your classroom. You have a diverse material that represents the learners in my classroom. And the other one is make sure the learning is related with their daily life or daily routines or their culture. Yes. <laughs> and also in the process of making our learning material, we make sure that it's accessible for all learners, boys and girls and students with disability and with learning difficulty too. And at the same time, addresses different learning styles and needs. Next, please. Yes, now I want you to comment in the chat. How, have you ever tried to make your learning material diverse? If so, what was the strategy you have used? Just two, three points, two, three comments, and then we'll see the strategies in detail. Please share us in the chat. Okay. Um, okay, I'll continue. If there is any storytelling cards and uh, for stories which are, okay, interesting. Very good, lovely ideas, the topics, different culture, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, when it comes to strategies to make our learning material diverse, um, in my class, I use different stories from different cultural backgrounds. For example, if I take uh, one topic on the, uh, on the topic that I'm dealing in this week, I might take one story from one of my students' background. For example, I might use the clever rabbit, depending on the level of the student. And, and the next topic, I might change it into another cultural background story. Uh, I might use Anansi the spider or the giving tree. It just continues like that. And then finally, you'll find out addressing so many backgrounds and uh, learning styles. At the same time, I used speeches. For example, I, I, I used, I remember uh, Martin Luther King's speech. And at the same time, in another topic, Mandela's speech, in another topic, another speaker, a politician or an activist, but I make sure it is one representing one of my students' background or culture. So using different, uh, different content sources is one of the ways to, create, to make your learning material diverse. And the other one is uh, whenever I prepare a lesson, intentionally, I make sure I embed songs, games, uh, visual aids, and audios, pictures, and images. And this helps me to address different learning styles. And at the same time, if I don't have, for example, a game for this topic, for this week's topic, I definitely uh, I, I mean, adapt one of the old games and make it a new one. The same is with the songs. And I usually 
change the songs into new songs. Take the old melody, remove the lyrics, and add the words or the lyrics from the new topic, and you make it a new song. In the meantime, you are making using different learning materials. You are diversing the learning materials and making the lesson interesting and engaging for the students. Next, please. Oh, no, no, I'm still there. Another, stay there, stay there. <laughs> Linda, ah, yes. And another topic, another strategy that I usually implement in my classroom is collaborative projects. When it comes to collaborative project, it's very useful and very important that you need to be intentional. I plan carefully the arrangement of the group. I make sure students are from different background and at the same time, different learning style. For example, um, in one of the topics that uh, we, I was dealing with climate and it was a, a bit extended and we have, we, we take long time on that topic. So what I did, them, I give them a project on model uh, to make a model of different climates like desert and uh, the forest, the Mediterranean, the rainforest and the jungle, all kinds of uh, representing life in that, in that uh, weather and climate. So when I do that, the grouping was very carefully planned. I make sure different learning styles are together. For example, the visual ones, the ones that like the drawing and the kinesthetic ones, the ones that like the breaking and the making and um, <clears throat> the auditory ones and the, the ones who like speaking, the, the verbal ones all together. They're learning from different learning styles. And at the same time, different backgrounds because luckily in that school, I was having various students from several backgrounds. So I was mixing them, those who came from a dry land and from the rainforest and those who came from um, the jungle. I was mixing all those different abilities and they make an amazing model to be displayed for the whole school and parents. So this is one of the way you can create your learning material diverse. To come to the practical tip, uh, let's see the practical tip of what we can do in the classroom. Okay, now um, your classroom, inclusive storytelling, you can easily practice this into your classroom. All you need is the artifacts. The artifacts are not necessarily the archeological findings that are in the museum, but it can be um, a jewelry, a coin, or a clay pot or vessel from uh, grandparents or ancestors. And then students, I ask students to bring to the classroom. And then after they bring it in the classroom and then they just tell a story, make sure different group of people, uh, students bring different artifacts. For example, all they have to do, look at this, I hope you can see, I guess. Can you see this one? And is there anyone who knows what this one? Hey, <laughs> do you know it? Have you ever seen it? Okay, this is called Ethiopian coffee pot, Jabana. This can be one of the artifacts in Ethiopia. Yes, Jabana, thank you. <laughs> Somebody is writing Jabana from Ethiopia. Okay. This is this can be an artifact for Ethiopian. It is actually. But what we do is usually yes, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. What we do usually is I can a student who brings this one can I tell a story about can tell a story about this teapot, a coffee pot. And I can say, for example, this is my grandmother's um, coffee pot, Jabana, and she made it. And uh, every Sunday we come together and we roast coffee and with the aroma and we grind it and we boil the coffee in this uh, coffee pot. 
and then uh, we share a meal and a story together. That's it. Story with the artifacts. And the same is true with other artifacts. For example, if you have the a jewelry, something like this. This is a, a real artifact. And a coin, and I have this coin. You can use all these artifacts to tell a story. Different students bringing different artifacts. The other thing I do in my class, I love to do this most of the time, is a, a treasure hunt game. What I do is um, I bring different pictures from different cultural backgrounds, like cultural food, cultural clothing, uh, artifacts, pictures of artifacts, music and instruments, musical instruments. And then I, I hid it in different parts of the room, in the classroom, or you can play it outside if you have a space, if the room is not convenient. Then the first student who get a picture shouts bingo and then all the students stop searching and then he this student doesn't show what he has at hand but he tells it what is it made of uh, what is it used for and where is it found and the rest of the students they guess and what's interesting in this part is if it is a dancing he is not, nobody is allowed to tell about the dance and the cultural name, but they have to show it. And that was one of the lovely time and a great fun we had in the class. All right, moving to the next. And the historical events can be one of um, a material that can use in the classroom from diverse background, from the students' background. He, very important, a very dear and near historical events in the, in the classroom, in, in their culture. You can ask from them or you can search for audio clips and uh, documentaries and use it for language teaching. Um, folk stories and songs are another way of making your learning material diverse. In this case, what we do, what I did is um, I make students into small groups and they, they, will already, they are already told to bring um, a cultural story or an, an ethnic story. And then they come and they tell the story. And the rest of the group, finally, they come in the front of the class and they either they retain it or they mime it or they act it out. And when it comes to the song, especially the folk song, is very interesting. I'm very much interested in those songs, especially the children folk song, is a very good resources for uh, language teaching in primary, especially. So what I do is uh, they come with a song with two um, lyrics, not more than that, and they teach it in their native language. In their native language, the children folk song. And then after that, they take the lyrics out and translate it and replace it, try to replace it in English and try to sing it with the old melody. That is so interesting and fun. One of the fun activities and at the same time, different learning material in the classroom. So the other one is using different version of the text and bold, simplified and change it for different uh, learning needs. Next, please. Next, please. Oh, these are the artifacts. Uh, some of the artifacts you can find, but some of them at home, some of them are museum. But next. Next, Linda. Yeah, this is our Jabena. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, one step back, Linda. Oh, no, no. Okay, next. <laughs> okay. When it comes to implementing uh, diverse learning material, what you do is uh, just, it's good to start small. You can start using the artifacts or the folk stories or the folk songs, whichever is easier for you. Uh, start small, but gradually, you can make all most of your learning materials diverse and but make sure you get a feedback and always keep improving it and uh, try to address uh, the the learners need in the meantime 
make sure you are addressing their needs. And next, please. Yes, when it comes to assessment, I think uh, we don't need a special way of assessing. Uh, we can continue the way uh, we have been doing the continuous assessment and the, the summative, the formative, the quizzes, reflections, and discussions, and also the summative ones uh, for exams and presentations, projects. But the very important thing here is. Uh, a continuous improvement and taking feedback, especially during the continuous assessment, we can take feedback and keep improving our resources and materials for better. Next, please. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> some of the things I want us to discuss is, is what we can try in the language classroom. In language classroom, um, a direct, uh, directly some of the things that you can try is uh, <clears throat> multicultural texts, using multicultural texts. In, in my class, uh, we have this culture in the beginning of the year, uh, we tell parents and students to collect, apart from that, the books we have in the library, of course, to collect different cultural storybooks and magazines too from different families. We have this box in the corner of the classroom and we keep it there and they bring throughout the year actually and they take it by the end of the year and we keep it in the corner and we collect stories. That's our reading list. And anytime we need, we can just take it and use it. It can be, um, poems or articles, especially magazines. In my classroom, we use a lot of magazines for collage and mosaic, including to make stories, including making stories. So that helped us a lot. And I see the children hanging around on that co corner and sometimes before class and after class and using the magazines and the storybooks. And for the teacher too, it's a great resource. And the other um, important help is technology nowadays. Uh, now we can easily use technology for support in the classroom. Uh, there are different apps. I don't know if you have the access and the policy and the device uh, with the students in your classroom. You can easily use so many apps that can support a language learning and language classroom and in the class and outside the class. And uh, some of them is like Duolingo uh, is very useful for vocabulary, grammar, and speaking and listening, pronunciation. All you have to do is uh, download the app and Rosetta Stone. What's interesting about this app is no translation. They just use visual and um, auditory clues to make the learners get the point or learn the vocabulary or the other language elements. And Quizlet is one of the great app that uh, any language teacher can use in the classroom. And what's interesting uh, in one of the apps, it's called B Bilingua app. You can translate the language into their native language. The target language can be translated into their native language. And that makes the text uh, much easier for them to understand. So you can use all the apps, uh, possible uh, available apps um, and in the classroom and outside the classroom. It all depends on the accessibility of the, uh, the device. Next, please. Engage, so, yeah, sometimes it's, I just give topics. I, I don't usually it's we have a textbook and we follow the topic and the content on the textbook. So you know sometimes I just feel like let them have the freedom. I give the freedom to pick any topic that is their interest and make a presentation on it. And I can see the children really enjoying it and being happy um, when it comes to such a presentation based on what they want to talk about. 
So it's good to give this freedom to have a diverse and a different learning materials in the classroom. Uh, the other point that I really want to emphasize is uh, we should not let the learning leave uh, between the four walls of the classroom and, uh, and just for the textbook and for the board. Uh, I always believe we have to share, we have to make the learning connected with real life, with real world. Uh, when it comes to the, this point, um, I usually like taking the learning outside, uh, physically outside and uh, connect it with real world. So we do a lot of planting and digging and in the school and uh, our class is famous for our plants. <laughs> we have the green class. And um, apart from that, on top of that, once uh, there was this topic I remember we, we were dealing, it was about food. And it was so interesting. We watched some videos and we saw some recipes and pictures and ingredients. And, and then by the end of the topic, I felt like, you know what? Uh, it's not enough. Can we try some of the cookings? Because you came from very different backgrounds with such a great dish in your culture. So can we try some of the foods? Can you ask your parents and tell me if they can volunteer to teach us? And guess what? Surprisingly, three parents volunteered to cook with us in the school and sponsoring all the ingredients. It was so interesting. So uh, we have, I, I remember I have the Indian chef, a Sharatan chef came to our class and we cooked Indian dish in the class and the school was very much supportive. And then the French bakery, a uh, French baking, one of the parents came to teach us. And another one was a Yemeni, a Yemeni parent came, all of them in different time. And then all the students wearing the apron, it was such a fun and great time and that you have no idea how the children enjoyed that. And the other example that I want to share and this when it comes to connecting um, to real world is uh, as a British council trainer, I trained so many teachers and this teacher, after the training, he came for a report with such a great story. And then he said he went back to school and he was dealing with this topic about, uh, he was a geography teacher. And then the topic was natural resources and how to conserve them. And when they finished, he asked them, they are from a very dry land of Ethiopia. And in that town, they get a drinking water twice a week by a, a, a truck. They don't have any water. So he said, how are you gonna connect this lesson with what our reality is, what our school is. The school is dry, no plants, and it's all dusty. So after the discussion, the students said, to, I think we can make a difference in our uh, school compound. And then another discussion and the, the teacher said, how are you gonna, we're gonna plant teacher, give us, allow us, give us a land in this school, we're gonna plant. And he said, okay, interesting. You get a drinking water twice a week by a truck and you want to plant in your school. And said, just give us this chance. And then guess what? They did it. <laughs> they take a container, they bring water, <laughs> they share the drinking water, their the drinking water twice a week with their plants and they grow plants in the school. And we, sh we saw the video of that. And what is, Exciting about it is what happened next. The city mayor was inspired and the individuals around were so uh, inspired and they started digging underground water in the school compound and they found water, which is a very interesting story in relating real life, um, the, the lesson from the classroom to the outside world, to the real life. Okay, next please. Yes, um, I think I, I already touched this point before. So can I go to the next one?
Thank you. Okay. What happened? Okay. What I want to share here is uh, so far from we talked a lot, uh, a lot about how to make di different cultural backgrounds, history, and other things. But at this moment, how about different learning difficulties? And um, just a few examples from classroom. Dyslexia is a reading difficulty. And when it comes to dyslexia, um, I mean, the experts can tell you so many things, but I just want to share what we have done in the classroom. Uh, it was very difficult first when we were, for the first time when, when I faced dyslexia. And then after we found out it was dyslexia, the dys dyslexic students, you cannot give them the text, too much text for reading. It's a reading difficulty. So what we did was you, we take the text and we make it into small chunks and different papers, and we prepare it as another, uh, as a different material. It's the same content, but the presentation was different, and we make the bold, we make it bold, we change the, the font, and what was available at the moment was cardboard. So we cut out the cardboard, and we laid over, on the reading on the paper that's on the printed paper for reading. So if it is, for example, a sentence, we cut, we cut it in the shape of the sentence, rectangle, maybe. If it's a word in the form of square, but we lay over that paper, over the, the printed uh, words. And then we help this child to read and focusing only on that specific word or sentence. And through time, it, we have seen an, a very good progress and in the reading of uh, that child. So we make the material uh, to address the child's need. And the other one is visual impairment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, visual impairment, uh, we try to address through different ways, especially in using audios and bringing real objects, tactile things, touchy things, so that they can feel and know the material with the shapes and with the texture. And um, for hearing impairment is pictures and symbols are very useful. Um, using, when it comes to neurodivergence, um, multisensory activities like meeting all kinds of auditory, kinesthetic and visual activities helps a lot. Uh, in in case of um, autism, um, I just I just want to tell um, a very simple story from which council training room when it comes to um, autistic students. Um, in in my school, one of the teacher used used to help audit autistic students using social stories. For example, for sharing, she has a story for sharing, for taking turns for greeting, for group work. She was using amazingly different social stories. But this young lady who came to my training room um, and she went back after the training and she told us in the training, she has this autistic student, it's from um, in the government school and she they really don't know what to do with him. But after the training, she came back with such an amazing story. Actually, we went, we went to see to their schools and this autist boy, she used a puppet to show him how to make, um, how to do a role play about climate. And then she involved him in that climate role play um, performance. It was to everybody's surprise. For us, it's the first time. We don't know uh, how he was before. So for the rest of the school, it was an amazing event that the way he performed as a tree and how to show how trees are important for the climate was so amazing. So um, even he was uh, using some words to express actions, movements, uh, so beautifully. So I, we thought he was just... Uh, we couldn't accept that was a, an autist child, but it's a mild one, not a, an a extreme one. So we have done all this uh, using all 
uh, different ways of approaches and uh, materials, we can address diverse learning styles and diverse backgrounds for our students. Thank you very much. I think I have to stop here. I think you can carry on and just do the practical examples at the end. Do you want to go through those quickly, Zeni? Uh, okay. Let's, let's have a look. I, th I, th I thought I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, well, we, I, I think we can go through time. these okay. quickly um, and then have five yes. minutes for questions. Okay. All right, fine. Now, can we, yes. Um, we, I'm going to give you an activity for matching. All you have to do is you just match the numbers with the alphabet. So uh, you read a, a text, uh, you will have, a, a, it's just a text, you read it and you match it. If it's cultural exchange, you, number one is A, cultural exchange. If you, number four is B, uh, you write four, then B, okay? So let's see the question, look at what A, B, C says and uh, match it with the number. Match the number with the alphabet. And share us on the chat. One is B, okay. <laughs> One is B again. Okay, one is B. One is B. How about two? Okay. One is B, two is C, two is C. Okay. Good to see. All right. All right. Okay, excellent. Out oh, next. Can we move to the next one? Three and four. Now we are on three and four. Three is D. Okay. One is D. Oh. Change three is A, uh huh. One is B, two is C, three and four. Three is A. How about four? I haven't seen four. Four is D, okay. Four is D, okay. Okay, one. Okay. Four is D. Three is. Okay, now we, we are on five and six. Can you try five and six? Five is A. Mm -hmm. uh, one is B. Five is C. Okay, six is A. Great. Ah, oh, okay. Excellent. This is a, an excellent class. Here is the answer. <laughs> you can check it. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, keep writing. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. If there is any question, I think we have some five minutes for questions. Linda, over to you for the questions. Thank you so much, um, Zenny. I'd love to be a student in your class. It looks so creative and <laughs> wonderful. And you've shared, you've shared so many very practical ideas. And I love the links to the real world as well. This is, this is excellent yeah. and very diverse. And the coffee pot, of course. 
yeah. So, I can have it if you want. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, there, were, there were quite a few right. questions. There was lots of interactivity, okay. loads of interest in the chat. Um, we've got time right. for a few questions here. Um, one of the questions mm -hmm. was interesting. It said, treasure hunts and folk stories, they, are, they seem to be too complex for elementary students, but too childish okay. for secondary students. What do you think about that? Uh, okay. I don't know the level uh, uh, you are teaching, but... Uh, most of the activities can be adapted to different level. And uh, yes, maybe uh, using uh, children um, <clears throat> folk songs can be childish for primary, uh, for, for secondary. Uh, but surprisingly, you might find the secondary st students uh, changing it into amazing songs and not necessarily singing the same song. They can change it into amazing songs, but all we have to do is you have to uh, try to um, give them the chance. That's what I believe. The other one is you can use other songs for secondary based on their level. There are so many songs on internet or even in the same culture. They can bring another song from the same culture. It doesn't have to be a, a folk children's song. There are so many songs in different cultures. It's rich, especially in Africa. Singing and storytelling is that uh, we're really good at it. You are very, very <laughs> good. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, there are another few questions. Um, one, um, okay. both five by Fozier, I think. Um, how can we do this with the curriculum when we have to follow a textbook, the norms and the standards? Yes. And also, yes. um, she was asking, how is our teachers' competence and commitment in modifying these materials based on students' needs? This means it's a lot of work, isn't it? It's hard work and takes <laughs> yeah. time. So how do yeah. we do it when we have to follow a textbook? And how do we find the time and commitment to actually teach like this? OK, uh, yes, when it comes to the textbook, I understand because thank you. It's a great question, Fuzia. Because we are in the same context, we know what it means. It's very rigid. You have to follow the textbook. but. What I, I usually do, I, maybe I, I shared a, a, an experience from a community school, but what I usually do is um, you, can, you can use, you can invade. If you don't have to change completely or you don't have to avoid what the textbook says, but based on the topic you have on the textbook, you can use other resources. They don't, uh, nobody will uh, accuse you for that, I guess. You have the right, you have the authority to make the content diverse. A small piece from here, a small piece from here, and then you can embed it. But the other question, um, when the time and the time and the energy is, it depends. I mean, as teachers who want to make a difference in the, in the classroom, and if we are, we're talking about inclusivity, and the, if you want your classroom to, to be valued, uh, to be accepted, and to be entertained with their differences, this is the, the, one of the things we should do. That is how we create inclusive classroom. Yeah, um, I mean, you're right. And may, maybe webinars like this where people are sharing their experience is great. Yeah. So if we're sharing everything we do, it's not all on one teacher's back. They don't all have to do all the hard work, do they? Which is yeah. teaching, we know, is very hard work. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. Great. I think they were the main questions. There were another few about um, what do you mean by English language materials? And I think you covered that afterwards as well. How to carry slower learners along. Um, but of course, we have the Telegram group on Friday with the discussion that Zenny is going to come to for all of the other questions yeah. that you might have. So thank you uh -huh. so much, Zenny, for that lovely, lively, exciting, interesting webinar. And uh, back over to Steve to close.